Hello viewers, welcome back to Saga Network Discoveries in Education with me, Justice E.M. Tijan. Remember say, Saga Network Discovery don't go on a different learning institutions for talk to students them, head of institution for know what's in the happen at the schools and also inside the book learning business. Well today again, we did at the Methodist Girls High School, who say we get to continue for talk to students then, the head of the institution for tell we exactly what's in the happen at the school and inside the book learning business in the country. Hello, welcome to Saga Network Discoveries in Education. You can please tell me you know. Um, my name is Rita Precious Kalko, a school prefect of the Methodist Girls High School. Okay, uh, Ms. Kalko, can you please tell us how long you have been in the school for? Well, I've been in the school since SSS 1. That's all. So from SSS 1, you know, to this point, how do you assess the education educational system in the school? Well, I can say the educa educational system in the school is good, but only that we the students have the issue because the teachers are usually punctual in class, but when they go to the classes, they do not have encouraging numbers, especially us the SS3 pupils. They do not have encouraging numbers that they will be able to teach. So some of them will just quit out of the classroom. Okay, so as a prefect, how have you used your position, you know, to see that uh, those things are being handled? Well, I'd like to encourage your, I mean, your colleagues to come in for for classes. Yes, we usually do that, especially the head girl and other prefects. We usually tell them to go and sit inside the classroom, but they prefer roaming around the school compounds and all. Even in classes, we ask them to keep quiet, take down the books and read, do past questions, revise over the past questions. Some do, some do that, but some others do not. Because even the principal encourages us to come to school, especially us in the SS3 classes. The principal ex encourages us to come to school, be punctual and class go and call teachers to teach us in class but like i say earlier on we the pupils are the cause of the problems okay so now you know at this stage do you think you guys have been equipped you know enough to face the public exam some have been equipped to face the worst exam some are not because like I say, not all of the people, their parents do not, have, not all of the parents have the upper hands to pay for extra classes or not. Because if they are not teachers in class or if the teachers are not punctual in class, then some of us that wants to be in class and wants to have something up there, we cannot have it. And some of us, our parents do not have the facility or do not have the income to pay for us private classes. So not all of us are equipped to go for the WAS exam. Not so all of us. So the school is getting us prepared for the WAS examination. The pupils are not punctual in class. So if a teacher enters into a classroom and they are not encouraging number in the class of the pupils to teach, then it, let me just say, the teacher will just go out of the class. Because sometimes if you enter inside a classroom, you only see two people in the classroom. And those two people, if you ask them, do you want me to teach? No, we are not ready. So you see? Okay, so now um, let's know, you know about examination and practice. You know, most times we, we receive or we get these things happening more in the external or public exam. Do you think what you are saying is one of the reasons or the cause for examination malpractice? I cannot say it's one of the reasons for examination malpractice because not even our own days. Back then, I can say those in the colleges, when they were in the secondary school level, they only believe in, let me say, they have their local dialect that they call it Geba. They only believe in these leakages, and which is not good because, like the former, um, the past government was that the sat, we have a huge amount of people who pass the worst exam, but they go for interview in the college. They can do nothing. They have nothing up there, so they fail the entrance exam. So I can say it does not lead to the examination and malpractice. All I can advise to my fellow colleagues: study, be focused then you will see what will happen at the end. Okay, so now let's know what makes this school different, you know, from another school. Maybe you want to encourage somebody out there watching you to come to this school. So what makes this school different actually from another school out there? I would just say um, the Methodist Girls High School 
It is a school of greatness. It is filled with braveness. So if you come to the school, I can say, I never have the plan to come to Methodist Girls High School, but what I had by our, our foremothers and forefathers those days that attended Methodist Girls High School, the explanations are a lot. It is a nice school, really. And they have trained and qualified teachers. Okay, so before we go, you know, which areas really like to call on the government, Ministry of Education to look at? Please to see that you girls have the kind or type of education you are seeking for in the school. Um, not, um, I would like to say, not only in Methodist Girls High School, but all over in the different government school or government assisted schools, the teachers are crying for increasement of the salary. And I need, I'm pleading to the government so that they can look into that matter seriously. Because that also leads them not to go into our classes. They said that the salary is too small, not only in Methodist Girls High School, but all over in other government schools. I would like to advise my colleagues to be focused. They need to be steadfast. first. Read your book. Education is the key to success. If you are focused, I can tell you, I can bet you this. If you are focused, you can become something else tomorrow. Now we are admiring at the first lady. She is a bright future right now. We are admiring at her. As for me, she is my mentor. If you are focused, you will reach to the pitch. And people too will admire at you. Thank you for talking to us. You're welcome. Hello, welcome to Saga Network Discoveries in Education. Can you please tell us your name? My name is Safia Gladys Bokari, NSS3 at 1 pupil of the Methodist Girls High School. Okay, ma'am, so how long have you have been in the school for? Well, I've been in the school since JSS 1. So probably five and a half years. Okay, so five and a half years, what can you tell us about the school? Well, it's a school that every girl child wants to attend. You know, some of, some of us fell for the uniform, the color of the school and all. So it's, it's actually a home. It's actually a home where we make, we make families and friends, you know. So, it has been great so far. Okay, well, let's talk about the education and aspects of the school. You know, what can you tell us about it? It's kind of effective and not effective in some ways. Because for now, since we are in SS3 and we are going to take the worst examination, teachers are not going to our classes. Why? Because... Um, the students are not coming to school and the numbers of um, attendants for the days, it's not encouraging at all. So teachers are not actually going to our classes to, to teach us. So it's whilst for the SS2 and SS3 pupils, you see every period the teacher will make sure that they are in their classes and um, they will have to sign because there is a book, a record book for each class, wherein wherever, with the time and the subject you have, the teacher will have to sign that, okay, I, I came to this class and I taught this topic, I'm done with this topic. Okay, so you say um, some teachers, right, are not coming into the classes to teach you guys, but we understand that um, you, the people, also are not coming to school. Maybe that is one of the reasons. But as the head girl of this school, how have you used your position to communicate that to the administration, I mean, relating the issues, this issue you are saying right now? Well, um, for the vice principal, she's aware that girls are actually in girls in SS3 are actually not punctual in school, so they are. I think I guess they are aware. They are aware of the fact that the SS3 pupils are not coming to school. Okay, so um, the lack of teachers not coming, you know, into the classroom is that really affecting you guys? Since you guys are in the waiting process, you know, to face the external or the public exam, is that having effect on you guys presently? Yeah, somehow it's having a great effect on us because we are like preparing for the worst exam. So we like need all the attention we can get so we can, you know, learn more and prepare for the exams well so we can come out successfully with great results. So is there any other challenge in the school that is preventing or stopping you guys from like gaining or getting the kind of education you are here for? Well... To the look of things, I don't think there are other challenges except for the um, proper um, attendance, which is discouraging. Even some of us who come to class, since the number is not that um, handful, we might just go back and 
you know, sit at home, or the next day will choose not to come to school because the last time I came to school, I was the only one in class. So it's actually hard to end in. Okay, so what would be your last message, you know, to the Ministry of Education and also to the school? Well, to the Ministry of Education, they are doing a great job, really, because the free quality education is really effective. Um, since we came to since SS1, they give uh, they gave us the books, they provided the mathematics and English textbook, and since SS1 and SS2, we've been going strictly according to it. But for SS3, since students are not coming to school, they refuse to give us the book because they won't bring it back. And you know, it has to be continuous. Like, you use it, you will um, leave it back for the other SS2 people coming to SS3 to reuse it. So, since we came to SS3, they haven't given us the books. And also, to the to my colleagues out there, I want to encourage because some teachers are actually coming to teach. Like, for our own class, our English teacher and the literature teacher is very punctual. Yeah, he's very punctual. Since our class is an arts class, he's, he's always there to teach and he makes sure that he teaches effectively. So they have to come to school and they have to stay in school. All right. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you, sir. Hello, welcome to Saga Network Discoveries in Education. You can please tell people your name. Yeah. Hi, um, my name is Marima Bentaba and I'm a pupil of Methodist Girls High School. Okay, um, Bentaba, can you tell us how long you have been in the school for? Well, I've been in the school for about um, probably four or five years because I've um, been attending school since my GSS level. Yeah, so, yeah. From your GSS level to this point, you know, can you tell us exactly what has changed in the, you know, in the school so far? Well, throughout my GSS level, I don't think anything has changed. The, teacher, the teachers were teaching effectively. I will only say that there's only change of syllabus. You know, it's very difficult and impossible to finish the syllabus before um, every girl or every um, student um, takes their um, take their different um, exams for the WAS or for the Beke. And so, what um, other students normally do? They join um, different classes, like um, the, um, private lessons, so that they can speed up their their. Um, their schoolwork and see how they can best see how they can um, finish their their syllabus before the exam. Okay, the government has come with a free quality education. We want to know exactly if the free quality education, you know, is it functional here in the school? Yeah, it's functional, and I I think it's still functioning because first started with um the school book and the school handout, which um the English and gov um sorry and math. And then there's this kind of, um, yeah, I think that's, that's the only provision given to us, just the English and the, and the mathematics, yeah, books. Those are the only things. I don't think they're there. Are and the free quality education has also helped um, girls, those who cannot afford to, like, to pay their school fees and all. Yeah, it's kind of like... If you are to call on the attention of the government or Ministry of Education to pay attention on certain issues or problems in the school that is affecting you girls, which area will you call on them? Well, for me, I would say um, the teachers, because no teachers, maybe some some teachers are complaining that they are not paid effectively. So I don't. So maybe that's the reason why they are not coming to to school to teach some. So they try like to increase um, the salaries of teachers. I think that will help. Yeah, and more. Yeah, I think that's all. Thank you for talking to us. Ah, you're welcome. Uh, welcome to Saga Network Discoveries in Education. Can you please tell viewers your name? I am Samuel Lois Jusu. Okay, sir, can you tell viewers how long you have been in this school for? Yeah, I've been in this school um, for about six years now. Okay, so from six years, you know, to this moment, or, or to this moment, how can you compare the the education system from then to now? Ah, well, um, it's a little difficult to compare because um, both of the systems that which used to operate um, before the, um, the abolition of the SSS4 and the current um, um, system which um, 
um, caters only for SS1, 2, and 3, all have their advantages and disadvantages. But um, comparatively, I think the advantage in the current system is that um, it, it helps um, girls um, to, the girls who work very hard to go to university at an early age. I think that is just the advantage because unlike the previous system, they would have to spend four years in the senior school and that means they would have to increase um, in age and all that. But this one, if you work very hard, you are certain of going to university just after three years of, 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 of study in the senior secondary school. Okay, so um, someone out there would like to say maybe the, um, the previous system before um, before is preferable than this one because the previous one gives them a lot of time to go through their syllabus rather than this one. What can you say to that? Well, um, y yes, that is um, their opinion for those who hold it. But I, I think, like I said, both have their advantages and disadvantages. That one, yes, it gives adequate time for people, for teachers to be able to exhaust the syllabus. But you know as much as I do that um, before the SSS4, the introduction of the SSS4, some of us went through the system in which there was no SSS4, you know, and yet um, we were able to make very good grades. So like I said, it's, it's dependent on the individual students. Once you work hard, you are certain of making the grades to university. So, so I think that is it. But like I said, the SSS3, especially for girls, you know, they grow um, 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 faster than the boys. So just spending three years in senior secondary, you know, helps them to go to university at sometimes, some of them even be before attaining full maturity, they um, would have gotten the, um, the, the requirements to university. You know, whilst in the previous system, some will stay. You see, in the previous system, we're having very um, 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 girls who are big in size and in age. Okay, so I think that is it. Okay, sir, so how effective and efficient is the um, teaching or the learning system in the school? Well, the teaching and learning um, 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 system it's, it's, it's really effective um, because um, teachers endeavor to give their best to give their best to, to the students and um, most of the students make the effort to ensure that they make good grades you know in any institution you have those who do not care we call them the I don't care type of people you know, um, you must have them in any institution. But in so far as my six years in this school have taught me to to believe that um, the teachers are doing well, and the students themselves are making the effort, even though you have um, some who do not care. But you would know that the teachers are doing well, and the students are making efforts from the results you know um, even though public examination results have not been 100 percent excellent but um for every academic year we are for every um, um, was examination we are we are certain of getting a good number of requirements um to university so it tells that teachers are working but you would agree with me that um currently the interest of 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 students you know, holistically, is um, is not as high as it, it, it were in those days because formerly students had the 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 the, the, the zeal, the the courage to learn and then do something big, but currently social media and some other extracurricular activities is what has taken their attention and so therefore they, they do not actually put the effort that is required for them to make very good grades but even with that you still have some who work hard to make the grade okay so um for the sss students you know since that um they are in a position to face the <coughs> public exams now some of them are saying um, um some teachers hardly come into the class to teach them and that is really affecting them since that they are waiting students to face the 
the public exam. What can you say to that? Yes, um, with regards to that, I must tell you that um, those students who must have told you that are the students I normally refer to as part-time students. You know, those are students who normally do not come to school. Because honestly speaking, teachers go to class. In fact, before um, um, you stop me to have my voice on this, I told you I was just heading to one of the classes, you know. And as I speak to you currently, teachers are, are, are in the classes. But if you go down the, the, um, the gates now, you know, you will see most of them just coming. Some of them are yet to come. And when they come, like I told you, in any institution, you have those who display that um, 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 I don't care kind of um, um, attitude. And so for those ones, when you meet them, they will always tell you teachers don't teach. But for certain, I tell you, teachers go to class and they teach. And if you ask those who come to school on a regular basis, um, they will tell you for sure that teachers go to their classes and they teach. And if you check some of the notes, um, their notebooks, um, you, will, you will see that uh, teachers are actually um, teaching. Now, take those books and compare to those who must have told you that teachers do not come to class, you will clearly see the difference and you'll be able to know that these are the, the students I refer to as part-time students. Okay, sir. So now, how is it like um, for teachers, you know, in this school, given their time, their commitment, just to see that, you know, the people get the quality education they need? How is it like for the teachers? Is there any challenge? Teachers have always gotten challenged. In fact, since Moses was a boy, teachers have always been seriously challenged. You know, I could remember, um, I could remember there was a time when we were told in a meeting that um, the teaching profession is not where you come to make money. You know, if you think um, you have come to the teaching profession to make money, then you are mistaken. Uh, but we, the expectation of teachers, you know, um, um, has not been actually met by the government because, you know, with the introduction of the free quality education, um, we were of the... Um, we are of the view that the, 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 the condition of service, you know, for teachers would have, um, 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 should have improved more than the, the current status, you know. Um, but up till now, we are just somewhere there. You know, when you look at what other um, um, workers, the, the, the civil service and those in, in other offices, receive you know compared to the teaching profession you will see that our salary is is almost nothing to write home about and you have in this school also a lot of um, teachers who are not on pin code you know and the same goes for a lot of other teachers in in several other schools in in in, in freetown and in the provinces they are not on on on, on pin code and for those teachers you would um, um agree with me that they come to school every day because when you, even the teacher I just spoke with now is one of the part-timers. They come to school, they teach, and sometimes they come from 1 um, um, o'clock p.m. and they're here on to 5.45, which is the normal school hour uh, for the senior school. You know, yet, some have been here for four years, some have been here for five years, and they have not been um, 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 given the, a, a, a pin code. So, so you will see that it is really very challenging for them. It is really very embarrassing because in the morning you dress up, you say, I am going to work. And your family is there to take care of, and even the expectation of the community people, your neighbors, you know. And at the end of the month, you see such people getting stipend from the school, which is, is, is really very infinitesimal. And so life for such people is really difficult, you know. So I think the challenge has been there. It is there. We don't know whether it will continue to be there. Okay. So in all of this, what message would you like to send you know, to the government and the ministry and also to the students of the school? Well, for the, um, to the students of this school, the message is they should work hard because success is predicated on hard work. It is only when you work hard that you will succeed. All of us have gone um, through um, the school system, you know, and in Sierra Leone for that matter. So um, we, we, we worked very hard and then we were able to realize, 
you know, the fruit of our labor. So I, I, I would implore them all to work hard, to do their best. It is not easy because when you are in school, you have a lot of challenges. Some, some of them come to school without lunch. Some of them have to walk to school. They don't have transport fare. But in all of these, they need to be committed, they need to be dedicated, and they need to work very hard. Because at the end of the day, if you work hard, then you will see that you would um, um, benefit from your hard work. Okay. Um, to the government, I think um, the expectation of teachers um, have not been actually met. So I, I, I pray that the government actually tries to see how they can improve the condition of service for teachers. Because when you look at the, the standard of living in the country, it's, 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 it's getting higher by every passing second. And so if that is the case, you know, I believe that the salary should be growing with the growing um, standard of living. But if the salary remains stagnated and the, 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 the uh, um, things, uh, prices of commodities in the country, the standard of living is getting higher and higher, you will realize that no matter the salary that is paid, in fact, the salary that is paid is, 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 is really in, in, in not, not, not enough for teachers, you will see that the problem will continue. So let the government see how they can improve the condition of service of teachers. Because once they have said free quality education, it is the teachers who give the quality education. Okay? Um, government has given the free, and it is the teachers who give the quality. And if the teacher has to give the quality education, then that teacher also has to be satisfied. That teacher has to leave home um, I'm satisfied that I have, uh, I have left food money, I have left lunch for my children, and they are also happy. I think with that, you will come to school, teach, and you are very happy to pass. Now, you know, if teachers are happy, things will go on well. And for those who are not on PIN code as well, you know, um, I think the government should also think about that. Because, you know, some of them, like I said, three, four years and they are hopeful that someday it will happen. So let the government also think, because since the salary is small, it is better if they get pink, pink coded now and they start receiving salary, even though it is small, I think it is better because it can help to cushion the economic um, um, crisis that uh, uh, they, they, they may be going through. Thank you for talking to us. Yes, thank you too. Okay. Hello, ma, welcome to Saya Neto Discovery in Education. Can you please tell viewers your name? I am Mrs. Khadija Tubin Tukanu, um, senior teacher at Methodist Girls High School. Okay, ma'am. So how long have you been teaching in this school for? This is my 17th year in this school. I came here since 2005. Okay, so 17 years in this school. Can you tell us something briefly about the school? Well, the school is one of the grade A schools in the country. Um, since I came here, teachers with the administrators, the past and the present, we are working together to see that um, the school gets to higher heights. Um, the school has been doing well in terms of public examinations because um, our target is public examinations. When the girls come to the to the, from the junior school to the SS school, we start from there to develop them, and if you know, the, um, the SS syllabus starts from SSS1. So we start to build the girls from there up to SS3. We are putting all efforts to see that uh, the girls do well at public examinations. Okay, ma'am, so um, tell us how effective or uh, like um, the standard of the education compared, you know, four years back, how can you compare four years back to now the education system in the school? Well, to be very, very candid, the standard of education, not only for Methodist Girls High School, has dropped drastically. Not only in our school, but it's a nationwide problem due to several factors that are responsible. One, 
the people themselves have a great problem. They are not competitive as it used to be. Students used to have that competitive spirit wherein they compare themselves to see that um, nobody beats another in the examinations. But now they are so lackadaisic, they sit down waiting for foreign materials or for assistance in the examination hall. Examination hall. That is why they are not doing well at all. They don't put efforts in the academia. They depend on uh, cheating in the exams. Um, initially, they used to read very hard. There was that competition among the girls or pupils in general so that they can do better in the exams. But for now, because of this um, attitude, this lackadaisic attitude, they just see it depending on foreign materials either from elsewhere so that they can be assisted to do better in the exams. So that has dropped down the educational system in the country. That is one the people themselves. Teachers are not sufficient, especially in the science stream. We had, we used to have the HE stream in this, which is referred to as the home sciences. But most times when we have girls coming from the GSS with better grades, maybe aggregate eight, aggregate six, seven, eight, and they want to go to the science stream, um, they prefer going to other schools like the annual Russian convent because we don't have um, um, science teachers. And science teachers are very scarce. We can get them, and we have two sets of teachers. We have the, uh, on, uh, they have the pin-coded teachers, um, which are, we refer to as, um, they normally come as um, part-time teachers from other schools to assist. Then we have unapproved teachers. That, that is, those are the ones waiting to be approved by the government. So at times, because of maybe the money they get from us, they are not effective anyway. So that again is hampering the progress of education. Not only in, in our school, but I think it's going to be a nationwide problem. Okay, ma'am. So like you earlier on said, and the girls haven't been given their best, you know, to the education. And as a school that has attained that higher height, what is the school doing to maintain that standard? Okay. So actually we are doing our best to upgrade the standard of the school again. Um, normally we call PTA meet meetings. I'm thankful I, I just recalled that, uh, I just recollected that uh, I have to put the parents again as one of the factors responsible. So what we have done already, um, each time um, we call a PTA meeting so that uh, we tell them about the flaws of the girls, so that it will help us to let them study at home. Because some parents, they don't want to know, they don't care. They go to work early in the morning, they come very late in the evening, so they don't ask what the girls, what their children are doing, whether they are reading or not. So we implore them so that uh, they too can put more effort towards the girls so that the, girls can, the, the pupils can do better. Um, also, we are trying our best by um, getting teachers from other schools to assist as um, part-time teachers so that they can assist in the educational system, so that they can assist the girls to do better. We employ other teachers from various schools. We get part-time teachers, unapproved teachers. The, the principal is paying out of the, um, the school coffers so that uh, to see that uh, the, the, the girls get their right to show in. Okay, ma, I'm talking of um, <coughs> teachers, you know, that are not um, on pain coded on pin code. So like um, has this been channeled to the, the, the ministry or the government to understand that these there are teachers in here that are going through this kind of um, situation? Yeah, we have done that severally. But um, recruiting teachers is not an easy, easy task. And now how the government is doing it, they are replacing, instead of recruiting, they are replacing. That is if a teacher dies or maybe um, somebody is leaving, leaving, sorry, leaving the teaching field for another lucrative area, then those are the type of teachers they replace for the others. So it's not easy at all. And the bureaucracy there where they go to TSC, they ask you to bring this to so come with those social documents. By the time you, 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 you get these teachers approved, it will take a long time. But we are doing our best, notwithstanding. That's why the principal is um, trying her best. She gives um, money, she pays um, stipend to teachers who are coming to teach. But um, we are depending on the government to approve the teachers so that they can do better. Because what, the, what we are giving them as a school is just small. So most times, if they come, we pay them the money, they will not come again, considering the transportation cost 
very expensive to and fro coming. Then at the end of the day, for each month, they will not realize anything. So they will start coming, then they leave us again because of that. So we are appealing to government to really, really see to this so that um, they can help us um, give these teachers pin codes. Not only giving them the pin code, because we still have teachers that we are giving pin codes that are still not being paid. That's another problem. They gave them pin codes, they have not been paid up till now. So that is very much frustrating, you know. So we are appealing to government to pay these um, types of teachers that are coming. That is all. So, you know, the principal doing our best to see that um, they encourage teachers, you know, to be more committed. Um, now, let's talk about the free quality education. Is really the free quality education, does it really have space here? Does it e exist? Yes, it does exist because one of the major things the free quality education is doing paying school fees, for which is a, it has been a problem for certain parents. Some parents... We are unable to even pay the school fees, even though the amount was so small. They were unable to pay. So for this reason, most girls or most pupils leave school for that. Thankful to the government, they are doing it for us. But again, notwithstanding, um, they should do more so that uh, these girls can um, really achieve what they want at the end of the day by maybe providing materials. Yes, of course, they, are, they, they provide uh, two major materials for like books for two major subjects, English and mathematics. That is a welcome one and is a very good um, thing they have done for the, for the pupils. But um, um, they have to do more by really, really paying the teachers that are doing the work so that they will be able to impart quality education to the girls. You know, they are trying their best anyway, even though, and even though at times the subsidies come late, but we are sure that they are paying it anyways. But normally it comes late. By the time it comes, we have done some of the things, just the payback we are doing. So we want to appeal to them so that they bring the subsidies on time, so that uh, the money can be utilized wisely. So as a school, you know, trying to maintain a standard, you know, what kind of type of discipline do you give to the students so that they can, you know, succumb to law and order? Okay. Um, there is this old adage that says, you spare the rod and spoil the child. That has led the girls, the pupils to, sorry I'm saying girls, girls because I'm in a girls school, that's why I'm just, so I have to generalize. Um, that has led the pupils to just continue to misbehave. In our own days, you spare the rod or spoil the child, you come to school late, late they trash you, either on the buttocks or the back. So if, by that, when you come, you go home the next day, oh, I'll be, I should be hurry up to school. But um, actually, that is um, outdated now because it's not just trashing. Cancelling is another one. Talk to them. Tell, give them ideas to, to see reason that uh, they should just comply by the rules and regulations of the school. You know, so most times um, in our own school, how we do it, uh, we give them white to wear so that we'll see that uh, they are not like the others. They are people that are misbehaving. Their colleagues can um, see that these are the, 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 the ones that are not, not comporting themselves. But that again, in fact, they've cautioned us because most times the girls feel timid and withdrawn because of this attitude. So now what we do is maybe we give them extra work in the school or they, they do not participate in other extracurricular activities. We stop certain girls, certain people that are defaulters not to participate in other activities. That's again, government is running at that, that we should not just um, um, ostracize them, you know. But again, we are doing our best by canceling them to see that um, they should behave themselves because um, good grooming is very, very good. When you have to be, if you want to be successful, you have to obey. You know, you have to be, obey for now, at the end of the day, um, then somebody will obey you. And as our school motto goes, honor before honors. If you want people to honor you, at the end of the day, you have to honor today so that tomorrow people will honor you. You know, like that. Okay. So um, before we go, um, which areas would you like um, to call on government to pay attention in order to foster um, the quality, good quality education in the school? Um, one of the areas, the key area is the teachers let them approve 
teachers, especially science teachers, are very scarce. Not only science teachers, teachers are scarce in general. Let them approve teachers and pay, not only to approve them, give them pin codes without paying them. They should pay them so that the teachers will be encouraged to come to the classroom. And again, yes, they did something for us. They gave us 30%. That is just too small for teachers. Looking at um, transportation fare and the cost of living, very expensive. So what the government, I want the government to do is to at least add to teachers' posts so that uh, teachers will laugh when coming to the classroom. But teachers will not find their face. They frown their face when they come to the classroom. Compared, you have the same qualification, somebody working somewhere else, earning 5 million, 6 million, or 10 million or above. You here, look at me, a senior teacher, almost acting as a vice principal. If I tell you my pay, you will cry for me, my brother. But uh, we are doing our best to, to see that things work because we have chose to be teachers. Candidly, we are doing our best because we have chose to be teachers and we are teachers, mothers, counselors, and everything. So, but we are appealing still so that uh, they can add for us, so that uh, we do better. Thank you very much, Ma, for talking to us. Um, yeah, you welcome. As soon as I don't listen, within the school picking and don't say, teacher and also the deputy vice principal don't talk about the book learning business at the school and Usai, they call on the government for pay attention to. Well, me, we bring you the program. Me, not Justice E.M. Tijan. I want to say thank you to my executive producer, Wena Dr. Isatu Kakejalo, and also to my cameraman, Mome Sky Bangora. So, till we meet again to another discovery in education, I want to say thank you.